white men, Hose. white rascal, Hose. Hose. all of you, Hose. you must die. Hose. Hose. Hello, I'm Simon Roach, and I represent the world's largest non-state civil defense organization. It's called Saitlanders in South Africa. We represent the white people of South Africa who are presently being told that they can expect to see a genocide against them. They're being told this by their own political leaders, the African National Congress of Nelson Mandela fame, the EFF Economic Freedom Fighters Marxist Party. Many of you will be familiar with this anti-white narrative, this anti-white dialectic, that government ministers in our country are talking openly about a genocide against white people, a civil war based upon race directed at white people, government ministers. Just a few days ago, YouTube published a video against whites, racism, all of these things with which you're familiar. It concludes with the words, it's time to teach whites a hard lesson now. Can you imagine? Around about the 6th of April 2015 in Cape Town, our current president, Jacob Zuma, stated that all of South Africa's problems can be traced back to the arrival of whites in 1652. As one black man put it to me, you know, Simon, in our ears, that means if you weren't here, everything would be okay. There would be no poverty and there would be no crime. It's an instigation. Jacob Zuma is also known for singing a song which goes, kill the farmer, kill the boer, and another song which runs, bring me my machine gun, implying the same purpose. This is our president. This is how we live. He's not alone though in his public agitation against whites. On the 7th of November, 2016, the leader of the Marxist Economic Freedom Fighters Party in our parliament, Julius Malema, was recorded saying to a crowd of supporters, I am not calling for the slaughter of whites, yet. As another black man, a leader in South Africa said to me, that means that he will call upon his supporters to slaughter whites, Simon. Indeed, Julius Malema told another group of supporters that when the EFF party assumes power, the Afrikaner white people of South Africa who've been here since the 6th of April, 1652, will be relegated to a separate status, an apartheid. He said it repeatedly and emphatically. As if that was not enough, one of the heads of the African National Congress's private militia, the spear of the nation, or Mkonto Wesizwe, a man by the name of Temba Mavundla, called upon young blacks to sign up for military training in preparation for an expected war against whites. This is really happening in our country. It gets worse. Our parliamentary record recently admitted the statistic that it is 2.02 times, in other words, more than double, likely that a South African farmer will be murdered than that a South African policeman will die. Some of these things are difficult to talk about. We live in a society that is so perverse that the moment that you examine what's happening, you recoil from it. Let's begin with a three-year-old girl being raped by four men. And as the post-mortem autopsy revealed, she survived that rape. A three-year-old girl, she survived. So her attackers, her rapists, these grown men, bundled her up in newspaper, poured gasoline on it and set it alight. That's how she died in the end. Or a four-year-old girl, crucified to her parents' farmhouse's kitchen table, and then raped by three men, while her mommy and daddy lay gurgling in their own blood on the kitchen floor. These things happen in South Africa and they're not isolated incidents. 
There are thousands and thousands and thousands of such incidents. That's how it is that we get to the statistics that I've been sharing with you. That's how it's possible that the likelihood of a white person in South Africa being murdered by a black person is 1,370% higher than the likelihood of any American being murdered. It's incredible. But that's what we live with every day. That's why we have to take steps to protect ourselves. Because in this country, rape and murder is not a threat. It's not something abstract and remote. It's something that all of us have experienced, directly or indirectly, perhaps an attempted murder. And so when we contemplate civil war, nationwide anarchy in this country, we contemplate it as an imminent reality, something for which we must prepare today. Every little bit of help that we receive from the outside world, from the few friends that we have, because we don't have friends in established political parties, we don't have friends in the media, in big business. The friends we have are the people who are watching this video. And every little bit of your help takes us a step further to protecting the women, children, old people, and non-able-bodied people who are going to suffer the very worst of the war that is coming in South Africa.